Hi there, my name is Mike Schlosser. This presentation uses an engineering GIS approach and geospatial buffer analysis to evaluate a proposed development project for certification under the LEED for Neighborhood Development rating system. Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEED, is a certification program that encourages the adoption of sustainable design, construction, and operation practices as applied to buildings and communities. Think of LEED as a way of promoting a green approach to community development. From a civil engineering perspective, LEED for neighborhood development is an opportunity to bring together engineering design and GIS analysis methods in order to meet a set of document requirements for achieving LEED certification. For example, the Smart Location and Linkage category encourages brownfield developments to reduce urban sprawl. Maximum credit can be attained if the project is located in a previously developed infill site that is also in a high density area. In this case, high density is a function of the number of street intersections within a half mile of the project boundary. And this is where geospatial buffers come into play. A buffer is a polygon drawn at a specified distance from a set of features. The reason we use buffers is to determine proximity or to select other features for further analysis. So in our example, we want to determine the number of street intersections within a half a mile of a proposed development site. So in this next demonstration, we're going to take our CAD drawing of the proposed development we're going to merge that with GIS information, such as parcel data and street centerline information. And then we're going to create a buffer around this proposed development and use that buffer to determine the number of street intersections within a half a mile of the project. So here we are. We're using AutoCAD Map 3D 2010 and we've opened up a CAD drawing called ProposedDevelopment.dwg. The first thing that we want to do is connect to some GIS information. Now, our GIS information is located in a shape file, and we're going to navigate to the shape directory in order to find our parcels.shape file. Now, we're using FDO technology here to connect to the data rather than go through an import-export process. Now, I don't like the color of these parcels, so let's choose a different color by stylizing these parcels. Very quickly, very easily, we've changed the look of these parcels. And now I want to change the draw order so that my proposed development is on top of these parcels that I retrieved from my shapefile. Okay, notice that I don't have intersection information there, so let's connect to some street center line data. I have a spatial data file here that contains street center lines. I'm going to connect to that, and notice that my street center line information has nodes and link information. So let's add that, again using FDO, to my session. So here you can see the links and the uh, square symbols representing the nodes. I don't like the way those symbols look. So let's change the look of those symbols so that they're a little bit smaller and that the color is a little bit more obvious. I'm going to choose a red color here. And so again, very simply, I've restylized this GIS information. Now, what I want to do is use this proposed development as my criteria for generating a buffer. So I select the Feature Buffer Creation tool, select the polygon that I want to buffer, set the distance to 0.5 miles, and very quickly generate the buffer. All right, let's zoom to the extents of the buffer. So here you can see the buffer that was generated. I'm not going to stylize this buffer so that it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. I'm going to use a transparent buffer. And let's take these, uh, this, this buffer and change the draw order here so that the nodes appear on top. I'm going to get rid of these links here. Now, the next step for me to do is actually to generate a query. 
I'm going to query just the nodes that fall within that buffer that I generated. So I select the buffer as my geographic condition and add an attribute condition based on the type of intersection. Now I happen to know that the criteria for intersections to qualify under lead means that I shouldn't be using, let's say, cul-de-sacs as an intersection. All right, so I've chosen the type and applied a geographic condition, and you can see that it's selected all of the appropriate parcels. Now, I'm going to quickly change the zoom scale here so I can get a view of the surrounding area. And to get a count, I simply bring up the tabular information associated with this parcel, with, sorry, with this buffer. And you can see that we have 239 intersections within a half mile of our proposed development. In summary then, better designs are possible because more design alternatives can be evaluated against lead criteria. We also used engineering GIS to help improve the efficiency of our work. We were able to embrace CAD tools for site design and geospatial tools for analysis all in one software platform. And finally, we used feature data object technology, FDO, to avoid the import-export process, data conversion, and data redundancy by simply connecting to the data. Also, we used AutoCAD Map 3D, an engineering GIS platform that integrates CAD and GIS data and performs spatial analysis.